So while we're still waiting, I, I wonder whether you found that uh, useful. I know this is all pretty overwhelming, especially when you see it for the first time, and opening P is somewhat obscure. You know that. Uh, and you're not a computer scientist, neither am I, right? And you just need to get your scientific research done. I know, it's all about Darwin, you know. So I'm sorry, but it's a tough world. Okay, the OMPI job just finished. That's really great. Oh, your program didn't write a file called core. It wasn't there when you started the program. I wonder where that comes from. Well, let's talk, but I need a strong and quick copy first. What? What did you just say? Somebody told you what? You think GPUs and OpenCL will solve all your problems? Let's make that an Excel triple espresso <laughs> and go by. So thank you very much. I hope you will find it useful. And that finishes the performance talk. Any questions? This is very specific. All this stuff is specific. But if there's anything in here, or... yep. So my question is not maybe specific to those problems, but more in general. Uh, we often uh, have problems such as matrix matrix multiplication, and we just call uh, LaTeX, yep. and we just hope that they're doing a good job trading it. Right. But from what you're showing, that it's so important to initialize uh, the variables mm -hmm. locally within this thread. And how can we possibly know how internally uh, each vendor is going to parallelize, and how we should initialize the memory to get a best performance? Uh, that is a tricky one because uh, essentially, in most cases, you can't tell unless you happen to know somebody somewhere. Um, if, um, in case of like a um, you you can you can see if you can pre-initialize your data before you're calling those solvers because those solvers won't do that by themselves unless they have some helper array that they need or something like that. So. But if it's more complex than that, I'm afraid you, you can only ask the one supplying the software what, what they do on it. And um, that's not information people are easy to share. So you may get some pushback on it, but that's about, you know, it's not a good answer. It's not a good answer. Try to see if you can help out and you know, maybe do some simple concept study. If you just call that thing with the, with the matrix inversion and you, you play a bit initially with how you allocate and analyze the matrix initialization, whether that helps. How did you get the, such a big confident key speed up? With all the things each, you, you mentioned took here and there, and how much each would say, what is the biggest uh, None, none of them really was like, this is the real, this is, all small, this is typical, this is the small mm -hmm. step. So what you do, you make a profile, always make profiles, whatever you use, make sure that you, you go in the right direction because numerous times I was very good at making codes run very slow. Now you can give long talks about that, but nobody cares. So you search, you look at the profile, you get this idea, and you know, that could be anything. Sometimes like in the first case of the false sharing, I couldn't figure out why I see that I don't time. Sometimes you need to drop it for a while. This, this was an example of step by step, step by step, incrementally saying, well, wait a minute, look, uh, there was, I think it was like a critical region that wasn't necessary. I just, I'm working on another open MP code now that eventually will hopefully be a case study here. I saw that one part got slower and slower as I added threads. And that's kind of the opposite of what we're trying to achieve here. So what I saw was he has this loop in that part of the code and it uses, I didn't talk about locking, um, but you can, you can do locking in OpenEP. And it has a big lock at the beginning of the, of the loop. And almost at the end, it has another release the lock. Why in heaven's name would you, would you do that? It's because you're only locking. And the cost of the lock grows as you add threads. So I ripped out the locking. It was about 2x fast a single thread. And, I was, and since then, it's that time, but it immediately reduced. So that is one step that was not on this code, but that's one step in the process. Then you make a profile again because it's a moving target and things bubble up like they were not important in the beginning. And you tackle that. That's that's more like real life than saying, oh, okay, one fragment there and then you know. The tools you use to open and key into the memory are the same tools? Different tools. Different tools. Um, since we, we have this 
you know, our, as part of our studio compilers, we have the performance analyzer, and I use that all the time to do this kind of stuff. And then, then we have ways to set the page size. Um, in this case of this code, I even went as far as doing it directly into the source code of the code. But we have other ways to, like, to play with. You set some environment variables, and it'll give you a larger page size. So, and if you see some improvement, that's an encouragement to, to go further. Uh, I use hardware counters quite a lot, but not initially. The problem with anybody who's ever used hardware counters, you know, it's like overwhelming. You don't know, you got like, I think we got 128 counters. Where, where do I start? I mean, cycles and instructions, that's easy, you don't care. But, and the names are it's not easy, but eventually you'll get there and you'll find out, oh, this, was, this is usually a useful counter. So one thing you do is um, you always check is a TLB misses page. You don't want to have too many page table translations. So when you see that number being very high, you start thinking about well, maybe not. But it's a very iterative process with at times very frustrating. Right? You want to make it run slower. Whatever you try, you've got this brilliant idea. Well, <laughs> not everybody agrees it's slower. So. Yeah. When you mention the automatic um, parallelization compiler or translator, does that translate it into OpenMP or translate it directly into? Directly into the code. We, we have had requests and people have been thinking about generating the OpenMP and spit that out. There's one problem with that. We actually we have a nice feature in our, in our compiler. It's called compiler commentary. It will tell you in hopefully human readable terminology what it did to your source. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's already hard because they do so much to your to your code. So if we would we we wouldn't be able to show you your code with the OpenMP you put in. We could show you after all the massaging and optimizing, and then the OpenMP. It's, it's pretty much unreal. I, I've seen it. Like I don't think that's the solution. Yeah, but yeah. And um, if there's no more questions, I have a question for you. A comment uh, here. If OpenMP scale, why all the community centers are using extreme memory and PI instead of it? Oh, that's the next talk. <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's, uh, as I hopefully made clear that, sure, you take an OpenMP code, either you wrote it yourself or somebody else, and the chances are fairly high it doesn't perform as you, you expect it. But that shouldn't be the end point. That should be the starting point about you know what's going on, why, and as I hopefully shown in all these cases, it has nothing to do with OpenMP itself as a language, but the way it was used or some system things. Any other questions? Because the large memory machine is You have a great big, biggest memory machine. I think the prices are actually not that. Um, I'm actually, that's not a secret. On Monday, we will announce a low cost, high performance spark processor. You pay for the memory. The memory is. Yeah. And that's pretty much system independent. So when you look at I like the machine I, I like is that T58. My personal system to play with in a way, and that's not that incredibly expensive. Now, of course, price depends on many things, um, but when you just the prices have come down quite a bit, and I think when you when I, I'm not good at price, but the network infrastructure isn't cheap, so a lot of high speed. People got to figure that out. But, uh, certainly, the old thing where the price was really high, it's not so not so true. I got a question for you. Anybody, anybody who cares to take this is a this is a profile and um, of um, I think eight eight threads running this code and um, the barrier times I grayed out all the functions and I highlight the blue is the barrier time and I said I I keep asking questions to the audience but if anybody cares to see what's what's kind of sticking out here. What's the what's kind of the first? I put this in because this is really like you know, this is your code. You make a profile and okay, what do you learn from it? And I guess 
that hard because you, you're not really used to quickly interpreting this tool, but what you see here is this one is running all the time. It has no barrier. So it seems to point at a load balance problem mm -hmm. where this one just crunches along and the other ones are waving. You know, that's that's the idea and then you're going to zoom in. So I couldn't resist to put that in this last one in real life. <laughs> so that that I said, uh, I think the biggest thing is is when you want to optimize the code, don't give up. Maybe drop it for a while, get some other idea later. And and it is you know, two steps forward, one back there. Okay. Page sizes on x86 64 systems are rather restrictive. Any comments? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> they are. I, I, I never understood why. And um, I said, I don't didn't want to make this a talk about Spark. We don't Spark, we, we don't have that. And we go up to <clears throat> two gigabyte page sizes. And there's no, you can use all of the TLB for this. So you can spend pretty wide memory on those. Another question is, if I want to use GPU, which should I follow, OpenMP or OpenACC? Depends on who you ask. The lady in the corner here might, well, I don't know. You got to look at your own constraints. I, what I like is the integration, um, the whole OpenMP environment, and then the accelerator is just a natural extension to it. But I do think that OpenACC has a richer functionality today than OpenMP. Is that is that right, Alice? Is that yeah? I'd, I'd say some some things are certainly the people that wrote OpenACC um, stem from the OpenMP world, and the two groups. So I see them really working closely together. And the question is: Is, is OpenCL still um, <coughs> on on the horizon? And and it's a matter. Yeah, I mean. Most people that I talk to generally believe that, that having everything uh, combined together in, in OpenMP is a good thing, and, it, and it's, it's easier for people to comprehend that way. So, right. so we'll see. Nobody wants to say no to one of the other camps. The to me, from the aspect of the um, we would like to recommend OpenMP more. It's an open NCC code if we have it and we can't run it at work. <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, if it's an open IP code, it can be brought to other GPU system and run it. And when I feel like uh, open IP is sort of uh, like a, a one step ahead of open IP as a sort of uh, a feature playground, then open IP uh, the, the standard is, is trying to adopt whatever is useful for, from uh, open IP to open IP. And, and with open IP and with open CO, we're really fond of the openness of the codes. Uh, you know, there's no, you know exactly what's going in and, and their open development uh, environment for those. And so that that makes your application fundamentally portable between different vendors. Thank you, speaker. I know we have another, another session short, up, Mr. Yes, but I want to thank you for the right. talk. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We got one more to